Unit 2, Video Lecture 4, Changes in Matter. A physical change is similar to a physical property in that the original substance we have still remains. The only difference is that we've changed its shape, its state, or something like that. We still have the same we still have the same substance before and after our change. For example, if we were to boil water, well, in here we have liquid water, a bunch of liquid water molecules, and as it boils, those water molecules escape, and we still have water molecules in the form of steam. If we hammer if we hammer together pieces of wood, we've changed its shape, we've changed its mass because we've added to it. However, we still have the same type of substance. Phase changes are also physical changes. This is a change in the state of matter. And our three states of matter, like we talked about earlier, is solids, liquids, and gases. If we move between a solid and a liquid, our two phase changes is, are called melting and freezing. If we add heat to a solid, it will then melt into a liquid. If we remove heat from a liquid, then those molecules, the space between those molecules starts to decrease. They start to become more tightly compact at liquid freezes. Addition of heat is called endothermic. If we take a look at this, the prefix endo means in. Mech refers to heat. This is heat coming into our substance. Our endothermic phase change is melting. If we remove heat, it's called exothermic. Here the prefix exo means out. So our exothermic reaction here is going to be freezing. Now if we, if we take our liquid and we add heat to our liquid, that liquid can become a gas and it undergoes vaporization. If we cool off or remove heat from a gas, called condensation. So vaporization is endothermic, and condensation is exothermic. Condensation is the reason that cool drinks sweat when it's warm out. Our last set of phase changes occurs between a gas and a solid. If we add heat to a solid, and that solid turns directly into a gas, an example would be something like dry ice, which is solid CO2, what we say is that it sublimates into a gas. It doesn't go through the liquid form, it goes straight into the gaseous form. Now if we take that CO2 gas and we remove heat, and it doesn't pass through the liquid form, we say that it deposits. It undergoes deposition. So sublimation and deposition are our six phase changes. One of the things that we'll see is that if we were to graph a phase change diagram, what we would see is starting here at a low... Okay, here's our temperature. And let's graph temperature against particle motion. Because remember, all particles are in motion, even in, even in solids. So, as we start to see an increase in temperature, eventually what will happen is there will be a leveling off. Now, this low temperature, this portion, means that the substance would be a solid. Here, as we start to see this flattening out line, this would be our melting, our freezing point, depending on where we're moving. If our temperature is increasing, then it would be melting.
If our temperature was decreasing, then it would be freezing. We would then start to see the addition of heat. As we start to add heat, we'd start to see the temperature start to rise again. This line would be in its liquid phase, and eventually we'd start to see a leveling off. This would be our boiling point, and then the rise in particle motion. We could also call this particle energy. This would be our gaseous phase up there. But something to keep in mind is that here and here, these are our, these are our areas of phase change. Notice that we don't see an increase in temperature throughout that phase change cycle. Now, a chemical property, on the other hand, can only be observed when the substance is changing into something different. Here, we have to have the creation of something new. Our two chemical properties are flammability, a material's ability to burn in the presence of oxygen, how flammable it is, and reactivity which is how easily a substance combines chemically with other substances, how reactive it is. Our chemical changes, these are the results of a chemical reaction. So again, we're talking about the creation of something new. We're going to take, we're going to take a reactant or a couple of reactants and create a product. During this chemical change, the composition of matter always changes. So, for example, if we were to take sodium and add it to chlorine, chlorine is actually Cl2, these two things are our reactants. We have our arrow simulating the change, and we create sodium chloride, small sodium atom. So here we see a difference between our single sodium atom our two chlorine atoms bonded together, and our NaCl is something different. Just like we saw when we took our water and broke it down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Water was different than the hydrogen and the oxygen. So how can we tell if a chemical change has occurred? There are some clues that we can use, and they include things like color change. So here in color change, you see this nice copper-like color, and over the course of time and exposure to the elements, we start to see the copper color starting to, starting to change color into a darker orange, and then eventually into a green, and then into this bluish green. We have gas production. Here, if you notice in here, we have two things of solid inside those balloons, and when we lift those balloons to stand them up, the powder falls into the liquid, and the balloon starts to fill with some sort of gas. So gas production is an example of a chemical change. And then finally, the formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is when you mix two liquids. So here you have the yellow liquid, and it's being mixed together with the clear liquid. And the result of that is a powder. So this powder is a precipitate, solid formed by mixing two liquids. So our three that we've already talked about, a change in color, the formation of a gas, and the formation of a precipitate, are three of five clues that we're going to use in order to determine if a chemical reaction takes place. Remember, when we talk about formation of a gas, this can include bubbling, fizzing, popping, however you want to describe it. We can also use energy change. And the two types of energy changes are either endothermic or exothermic. If you mix two things together and all of a sudden it becomes cold, like those traveling ice packs, you crack open some things inside and then all of a sudden it gets cold, That's get, that cold is the result of a chemical change. This exothermic would f mean that it feels hot, so those hot hands, you open them up, shake them, and they get warm. You put them in your pockets while you're watching a football game in the winter. Those are releasing heat through an exothermic reaction. Then finally, the production of light. So remember when we talked about flammability? Flames, flammability, it's going to produce light. That's going to be evidence of our chemical change. So go ahead and pause the video and classify the following as being a physical or a chemical change.